In this video, I'll show you how you can use the FIGAF tool in your SAP PIPO to integration suite migration. So if we look at the process that you normally go through is there's something about planning. The FIGAF tool will here enable you to uh, come up with a better understanding of your current landscape. Um, you have an option to perform some proof of concept migrations. When you get to the micro perform, uh, we also have the option to migrate integrations. Uh, we, you can use the DevOps setup. There's a lot of testing of integrations, of migrations. There's a groovy XSLT in it to make it easier to develop. When you get into the testing phase, uh, the tool allows you to unit test this so you don't need to spend as much time on testing. We can obviously keep track of the migration process. In Go Live, the tool is able to move your integrations into production uh, and ensuring you can configure it correctly. And finally, yeah, governance, documentation. And when you run it, there is also a lot of components uh, to continuously support this. If we just look at this journey in a product view, what is it that we have? We have uh, two components. We have the DevOps part or the migration part. This is the part that you can use in the migration journey. It's one application. It's just controlled on licenses, depending on what you uh, want to use it for. So we have some components that are free for, for one year. This is our assessment that gives you an overview of your integration. Uh, we have the test data and running on uh, CPI. So you can actually take some PI messages and run them on the CPI. We have a migration uh, that enables you to migrate or manage this, this overview. Then we have the, the ICO migration. This is our proprietary way of migrating and it will streamline the way you're working uh, and we'll show that uh, later in a lot more details. Then we have our DevOps component. This is about moving all your integrations into uh, production, have governance, have testing, all these things uh, as a part of this. So when you're using the free one year uh, license, there's some limitations on it. You can take a PI message from PI and then you can run it on CPI or integration suite for up to uh, 30 days. Um, if you want to create more test cases, you, you need to re-record them from the PI system or you need to buy our license uh, for, for testing. Okay, let me show you what this actually looks like. So we will go into our VGAF system. Here we'll go to our dashboard. And here we have an, an overview of our migration. So first off, we can see we have here a number of tags that we have selected. We only want to see items in wave one. So normally in projects, you would go in and group and say, okay, we have these projects. If you add some tags to these, uh, you can go in and you can just say, hey, I just want to see wave one in this uh, release here. Um, so this is the overview where you can manage the migration. You can see all the icos that you have here. Uh, this has just been migrated multiple times to different uh, items here. Um, we can see how many test cases we have. We can see how many CPI test cases, who migrated. And finally out here, we can see if this iFlow is also in our productive tenant that we have set up. Okay, before we get started, we have this report here there where you can say, okay, let's get an understanding of the current landscape. Um, this is quite a nice report that you can then put into pivot tables and start uh, figuring out what are all the components uh, in here. So we have the, the ICOs. It also shows classical receiver determinations. Um, we have the sender systems. So let me just put in the... Filter. And I guess it was more the freeze top row. We have all the modules that is being used here. So you get an idea about that. We have adapter configuration, non-transportable here. We can see sender tags. So let me just talk about that a little later. 
Um, we can see operation mappings. What are the message mappings under this XSLT app app? All these things that is used in this. We have uh, the function library is used. We have the imported archive that is used in this uh, operation mappings. We have something about some some errors that we added to this about is this a multiplicity or something else that is of interest for this scenario. Uh, we have um, receiver information, number of PI test cases, um, and finally, if it's been migrated and how many messages has been processed on this in this last period of time. So it's current month or the last month. Um, you can also go on the project view and see, okay, so what is actually migrated? What is uh, moved into production uh, for these specific things? So it gives you really a good overview of what is going on. So one of the things we found was when doing migrations, it is often the small things that that matters. So this one is not going to give you any details about things that cannot be migrated for one reason or the other. It is up to you to go in and figure out what is it actually that is needed for, for this. Uh, so we can see here there's some JSON to XML. It takes a little work around to, to be able to work with that, but it's not impossible. There's some of the other maintain order and runtime, probably not a, a, a problem. But if you want, for instance, to create your own tags, we have this thing that's called tagging rules. Here we can check this uh, maintain order and runtime. Um, this checks that if it is exactly once in order. So that's obviously a problem um, when working on, on this. So here we're just going to check the receiver interfaces on the ICO. If they have quality of service, uh, we can also go in and say, hey, we want to check this X, X path here. So we can see easily go in through this edit this create a new x path that covers some of these different things that is important for us to check so with this we can go in and see hey does does a receiver interface have this um and this one doesn't so it's it's fine i guess um once you've done that you can just go and say hey run tagging for this one that will mean it will fetch all these go through all the objects in the database and, and mark them and see if it is actually relevant or not. And you can go in, you can see these these icos uh, here in this case, and then you actually see those also in this uh, assessment report. So it's one way of viewing all this, uh, these details. And you can add as many rules as you like. Um, and it is normally recommend that you continuously improve this the more you get to experience of what's the problem. Okay, we have now found an interface that we wanted to, to migrate. I will be using the one I've been doing a lot of time. So the first thing, bef well, you can obviously decide how you, you want to work with WordPress. Do you want to have the test data first before you migrate or the opposite around? Let's first create the test case. So we can create here record messages, demo, um, just a sec. So we will just add a name here. We'll also add a name here. There's a lot of ways you can go in and f create test cases. So the, the way we're fetching data is we're looking in the PI system. We are looking at the ICOs that has been processed. Um, and we can then either find the data in the adapter modules, we can add some adapter modules to it, or we would use the normal ICO locking settings. And for some, if you have file content converter in, you can use this that will then fit the data from uh, with some extra settings. We will say here fetch future messages. You can also say just the specific or historic messages. So we'll save here. And now it is setting us up to do a recording and we can then send two messages into this. Um, the problem was that this interface failed on the PI system, which meant it needed to, to wait until it had failed. So what we have now is we have one inbound and three outgoing messages. We can look at these details. We can see these, these details here and just to show we can view 
what this data is, we can go in and let's just change this uh, uh, cell to. So we have some way of knowing, hey, does this testing actually work? So now we have a test case for this, and we just need to create a test case on this group. And I'm still waiting for a few messages. That's fine. We can cancel that. So now when we go to our overview here, we can see that there is uh, 11 messages. We can then go and create migration. Um, 0904. So we will just uh, invoice call it this. We then is the name of the iPhone. It's going to be in this package. We have a number of profiles. We have the local process with GMS retry. Um, you can also use it without GMS retry. And we can just see here what is actually going to be created. It will create this uh, this view here. We have one for each of the two branches that is being processed here. We have some error handling, and then we have a retry logic here that will be processed each time an iFlow is, is sent. Um, normally, we would just recommend that you use the one without uh, GMS, uh, but it obviously depends on what is uh, actually you need for this. We also have a single process. This is our first one. Uh, that's probably more if you have synchronous scenarios there. Everything is just in one go. Um, the one I prefer and like is, at least for async messages like this, is the um, this um, part, uh, pipeline all uh, scenario that will create everything you need to do for the pipeline concept. So we'll just add uh, 0903, 4 here. As it, the interface is the same. We have an option to do if it's just P2P scenario, we can say we want to deploy this after the migration. So, so since we have a split here, we cannot do that. Um, we can see here the senders that is being used. We have an option to change these. And we have a way that you can take an existing iFlow channel and use that as templates and you can map between these uh, elements. Right now, just use the standards, uh, but you can obviously modify this. If we look at the XSLTs that's being generated, it looks like this. Uh, we can modify this if we think we, that's better. Um, and if we do that, we just need to regenerate name and check again. Then if we look at this, then it's going to be sent to the service that's called ERP24. Um, here we have all the resources that is being used in this. We can see we have a message mapping. It is using this mode about extracting user-defined functions into a separate uh, functions. We have uh, string utils, um, ar imported archive that's being added to the flow. Um, we have some schemas that's being used, and we also have some user-defined functions. So some of these user-defined functions, uh, here we have a user-defined function. We have already migrated, all of these objects have already been migrated, which means we're actually able to reuse them for our migration. And we can say, hey, we want to use the, reuse the shared, or we want to override uh, and re-migrate it. So normally, we just recommend that you reuse the existing one. But if you have made a lot of changes, it makes sense to update these things. So this is the resource part. Here you can see some of the problems that is expected to be on this uh, migration. Um, that there is a variable that is being used. Uh, there are some some things that we should be checking out. Uh, just one thing: if you are looking at, for instance, um, uh, user-defined functions, we can also use the SAP. Uh, user-defined function, so you've already migrated it, you can use those uh, uh, scenarios. Okay, we just need to check again that we have everything. We can then preview what is the components that's being generated. If we don't want the interface, we can exclude it, and the same for the receiver interfaces. Now we just click Migrate, and now everything is needed, is created for this, so the iFlow is triggered for deployment. We also trigger the create the B2B 
artifacts that is needed for this uh, or the trading partner management artifacts that is needed for this to work. Uh, so now all of this should be deployed. Um, and what we can then do is we can go back here. We can select the line again, not on any of the, the objects, and then we can say migrate test cases. Here we can then say migrate to CPI flow. We'll just add it to our existing test suite. And here we say, oh, so what is actually the objects that is a part of this? And we can specify where we actually want to pick these uh, messages in for this uh, scenario. That way, it's easy. Uh, we're using uh, um, a scenario here called chain testing, where you define if I send a message into this iFlow, where can I pick it out? Okay. So now we have created this chain. We can see the object is chain here. And we can then run it, which essentially would enable us to send messages into this iFlow. And we can then see if they are being picked out by these receiving systems. So here we're just looking at the incoming and the outgoing messages, but there's also other ways we could look at these things. So we can see we got some, some details on this. Uh, this one is not picking up something. I think it's because this uh, view is uh, yeah not deployed correctly. Uh, I think there, the SFTP has some uh, some problems, and that's why it's not able to to deploy it and being processed. Uh, but we can go in here. We can see the diffs here. Uh, if there's any diffs here, we can check the diffs here. There is none. Um, so, what if we want to monitor this uh, scenario? We also have a monitor in the the tool, so we can go in here to the message monitor. We can see what's been processed today. And we can see that there was an error in this iFlow here. There was a SOX5 error. And we can go to this iFlow. So we have a lot of navigations that enables us to actually navigate to all the artifacts that is needed in this. We can look here. We can see the way it fails. Oh. which I would imagine would be here, since it is an SOX error. And I think this is just because I'm using an invalid template for this, so it is using the on-premise, which should be on the internet. Um, let's see if that would work. And while we're in here, we can look at this, these artifacts that has been created. So we can see here, we have some, some artifacts that's being set here. This is because on the ICO we had some parameters that were configured. These are automatically added into the message mapping. And when we look at this message mapping, we can see that the details here, uh, we have a function here called concat strings that if we edit the script, we can see where it comes from. We have this uh, with CPI helper that enables us actually to open it in our ID. And that means we can go in, we can say, okay, what is, does this actually do? So if we have a message here, we can say run. It will, yeah, not do anything <laughs> really <laughs> with it. Um, not really the best uh, uh, function, but we can just add a new part here. We can say, uh, update here. I think I am in edit mode, so I just need to go out here and say okay, save it, and cancel because now I have not closed it anymore. So let's just check if we say upload here. Um, so maybe it's because it's an invalid version. Uh, that we have that there is a new version of the, the iFlow in place. that, But normally you can upload it here, making it much simpler to edit and test these user-defined functions. And that's especially true if you start using some of the CPI or PI-related libraries that you need to replace. Running it on the integrations with Tenant just makes it so much easier to edit these things. Okay, let's deploy it. Oh, we need to just save it as a version. deployed 
And then we just also need to inform FIGAF that there is a new version. So FIGAF keeps track of all these objects um, in here. And that means that I can go in here and I can see this, uh, the iFlow we have here. I can go in and I can compare versions. We have this BPMN model viewer here. We can see everything that was changed as a part of this uh, this flow. Um, there was not a lot of things. I guess if we go, so we have the the, the SFTP channels set them here. We can see it has a receiver system, and here it has ERP um, that was it was changed to. So we have a lot of details on this. And let's just try to run this again and see if it gets a better result now. Um, obviously, the process is we want to explore what's going on, what is actually we can see on some of these uh, scenarios. Is messages being processed correctly? It still fails anyway. Um, did we actually? So if we refresh here. It still fails with an unreach. Maybe I forgot to deploy, um, and we are getting this retry reappearance. So we can see the flow that's being processed here. And I think guess one of the the challenges with this uh, partner directory is it's difficult to see messages, uh, what's been processed, what is collected. But you have the correlation ID that just makes it easier to see as a part of this process what is the different steps that we have here. Um, we can see the sender, we can see the receiver for all of these uh, components that's being processed. Um, so yeah, making it much easier to to monitor. Uh, we can also export this as a CSV if you you want to deal with certain criteria or understand what is actually being processed. Are there any messages that that you need to look at? So. With that, we have tested our migration. It's not really successful yet, but anyway, we have a good understanding of what it's actually going to do uh, on this uh, scenario. Um, that means when we go back here to overview, we can see we got now got a test case um, on this, and we can see who migrated. We can see the last uh, change of uh, these items. Good. Next up is we want to transport this. Um, and to do that, we will use our landscape overview here. Here I will use my packets, hold on seven, I think. Um, and here we can see the iFlows that I created. So these are these three iFlows that is a part of this transport. We can see they're not on the QA system. So one of the things we are doing is we are reusing the dev system also for, for QA because we see a lot of customers that are doing that already and having that, uh, having it as a part of your transport process just makes it so much more robust where you can take these content and you can configure them. So we can create a ticket here on this and uh, it's to, to this object. We will add these scenarios here. And one thing I have not used so long time is we can then update to the latest uh, version. If we are making changes to it, we can add the, the dependent objects for this. Um, but one thing we are missing right now is we do have a number of um, iFlows that were missing, I think called nine. So we do have all of these items that were missing that we need to, to add into it. Uh, so I think in the next release, we can add it here, but we can also, where's the filter here? Otherwise we do have it out here, package. Uh, so if we own 904, here we can see these binary parameters that's been added as a part of the um, um, partner directory. We can create them and we'll just add it to our existing ticket. 
So now we have added them to our ticket here. And if we look at it, we can then see that we do have the binary parameters as a part of this. We can use the test cases, so we can look up the test cases that were a part of this. Um, I guess we are missing the, the option to, to attach chain tickets to this. Um, we can now start the transport. If it was plain iFlows, you can just add them. It's obviously a lot easier, but the pipeline just makes a lot more uh, sense. So when we're working here, we have an option to go in and see here. So the iFlow is going to be called QA interface name. In production, we can see some of these parameters that, that exist here. Let me just see if in the other one. Um, so this is the uh, here we have one of the, the outgoing of oh, that incoming. We can see here, for instance, the soap URL has been changed uh, automatically. So we're getting this that says, hey, if it's called figaf one, we need to change it to figaf three. And that just makes it so much easier because you don't need to remember when we're transporting what is the QA host for, for something like this? We can also change all the other parameters as a part of this. Now, as a developer, I can send it to approval. And I can also approve it just to make it easier to do, do, do these demos. And I can then say, hey, approve it. Good job. And what would actually happen now is I can either I can schedule this transport, or I can just import it now. So we can schedule it to be run at two o'clock tomorrow or in the evening. Uh, there's obviously things that can go wrong whenever you're importing a transport. Um, so don't go completely away, but at least it will simplify the, the process and you can set up notifications for these things. Uh, so now it's been imported on the QA uh, tenant. And if we just go back to our uh, landscape overview here, we can now see that these parameters is actually configured uh, here in the QA. We can go in, we can view the, the payload here of this XSLT uh, that we have. Um, we can also go in if you wanted to edit it. You should not edit the QA ones, but only the, the productive or only the, the dev one, obviously. Um, so, that was part of the, the DevOps flow that we have. We have the assessment, we have the test data, we have the managing of the migration, we have the IQ uh, migration, and then we have the DevOps where we saw the transport, we saw some of the testing that you can reuse, we saw some of the external configuration, There's, we saw the monitoring, there's a lot more, and we saw the Groovy XSLT editor. Right now we just saw it for function library, but it also works for XSLT and groovy scripts and it is just simplifying the way you're working on these scenarios i sure hope you want to try it out uh, you can use the tool uh, there's a free trial of it everything uh, there's the free migration edition that you just go to figaf uh, and sign up for that free migration edition once you have done that there is a, a tutorial about how to install it it is in figaf in your migration project page I'll try to link that also in the description. Here you have an hour's video about how you can install it. Recommend it uh, to do it in B2P. If you just want to do a proof of concept, you can run it on, on your laptop. Then we have where we'll talk about how you can actually use this in your migrations. What are the different settings that you have here? And then we're talking about the DevOps capabilities, what is actually needed here. So I really hope you enjoyed this. You liked it, please uh, like, please uh, share this with your team members and then go to figaf.com and sign up and try this uh, scenario. Thanks for watching.